Abby Sharp. I'm Abby Sharp. Please welcome Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. Hi, I'm Jessica, and this is Sheets on Top, the place where we share motivational stories and fantastic business advice from successful female entrepreneurs. Now, normally, I have my business partner here, Tracy, but unfortunately, she's a bit under the weather today, so I am flying solo. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so now and make sure when you do, you hit on that little bell icon because that's how you'll get notification of our videos. Today, we are super excited to be hanging with Abby Sharp. Abby is a registered dietitian who has taken her love for food and nutrition and turned it into a lucrative career. As well as sharing recipes in her blog and in her YouTube videos, she also has just released a brand new cookbook. As impressive as Abby's resume is, the really amazing thing about her is she's managed to do all of this despite struggling with high performance anxiety. This is something that I can personally relate to and I'll talk to you a bit more about that at the end of the video. Enjoy. I think my brand um, largely is about me. I mean, when I started my blog, I decided to incorporate my name into the blog, Abby's Kitchen. Um, so I, I knew that no matter where my career took me, I was able to still be grounded in the fact that, you know, I'm still me. So for example, I'm a new mom, so I've been not only talking about nutrition because I'm a registered dietitian, and not only talking about you know food because I love great food, but also now talking about everything to do with motherhood and pregnancy and postpartum health. I really try to aim to have recipes that are gonna to appeal to a wide variety of palates and different dietary restrictions. So I have recipes that are vegan, even though I'm not vegan. And I have recipes that are, you know, are, are meat-based, even though I don't only eat meat and, and I'm not on the keto diet, for example. I'm a content creator as my profession. So I need to constantly be kind of reinventing myself, you know, just to keep myself interested in this and doing this every single day. I have a book coming out December 4th. It's called The Mindful Glow Cookbook. Um, and essentially it is a, um, a non-diet approach to eating well. So my approach as a registered dietitian is really that all foods fit. And I want to empower people to have a healthier relationship with food by not dieting, essentially. We know that diets do not work, weight loss diets do not work. And that by simply listening to our bodies and responding to those hunger and satiety cues, um, we can actually you know, eat better, feel better, and glow from the inside out. I have a friend who is actually comes from a production uh, background and she said to me one day, Abby, I think we need to start a YouTube channel. And I thought, oh my gosh, that's such a huge endeavor to, you know, get the equipment and, and learn the learning curve is so steep. Um, but we started out just her and I just shooting in my kitchen. Um, and now we have a full functioning production team. When it comes to creating content, especially content that I feel is also gonna live on our YouTube channel, the people who are watching YouTube and are hardcore YouTube users um, and subscribers are very different than the kind of people who are scrolling through Instagram or are reading my blog every single day. They might be the similar types of people, but they are ultimately two different groups of people. So the types of things that Tenet have done like really well on my channel are um, reviews of, for example, What the Health, which is a very popular documentary on Netflix. Um, I also review other kind of YouTubers diets. So there's a very popular YouTuber called Freely the Banana Girl. And I've done two videos now reviewing her diet and both of them have instantly gone viral. Um, so people like to kind of get in on some of the more controversial topics. We are both opinionated diet dietitians and we thought it'd be fun to take apart a few of the most uh, outrageous diets we've seen out there. I think that being a YouTuber for the most part is not always about just playing nice in the sandbox. I mean, obviously you want to be respectful and professional and that's something I try to do, of course. Um, but, uh, you know, sometimes you want to make a good splash and um, part of doing that is being a little bit controversial and not necessarily being Switzerland. And in a lot of the cases of the videos that have done particularly well on my on my channel, I've taken, taken a stand. And as a result, I have some pretty serious trolls on my channel. I mean, I've been told that uh, that I should die, that people want to commit suicide and it's my fault. Like, it's extreme the kinds of things that I've seen. 
the first couple times it happened, it really did kind of hurt my feelings. I started to take it very personally um, as, a, as you know, as somebody being mean to me. Like it's, it's, it would be really hard if somebody said those things to your face. Um, but very quickly, my, I, th I know my husband and my assistant and a lot of the people around me reminded me that, hey, if people are taking the time out of their day to talk about you and to write you a comment, some of which were long, like essays, uh, I would take that as a compliment because ultimately um, it means that you matter. Sharing my story about my high functioning anxiety was probably one of the first um, personal stories I really put out there on the blog um, and so talking a little about my anxiety was really um, I, I had to be very vulnerable and I had to admit that I'm not perfect in fact these are things that I'm struggling with and it, it, I was nervous about it because I didn't want people to notice those flaws the same way that I would never kind of point out to somebody or to the world oh I hate my X, Y, and Z, you know, because in my body, because I don't want people to then pay attention to that part. I'd, I'd much rather downplay that. So I think a lot of us don't want to necessarily put ourselves out there as struggling with something because we don't want other people to, to notice that struggle. I've done training, all sorts of training from improv classes to acting classes to, um, you know, breathing classes to meditation. Um, so I've really had a, a little taste of all these different modalities and, and methods in order to get my anxiety under control. And it's really a daily exercise. It's not something that like one day it just like things click. It's, it's a series of um, exercises that I need to go through in order to kind of gain that confidence each and every day. Thanks so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. But what surprised me was that in, in talking about it, I had an overwhelming wave of people coming forward to say, I also struggle with this and thank you so much for, for normalizing it and to make me more comfortable knowing that, you know, I'm not alone in this, in this kind of struggle. Um, and, and we all have our own cross to bear and, and it's really important I find to, to talk a little bit about some of the challenges that we face in our life and not just about, uh, all the, all the fancy things and, and special things that are, you know, look so f fancy and shiny on Instagram. It's, it's not necessarily like that in real life. Thanks for watching and make sure to check out Abby's cookbook because it looks amazing and delicious. And also, we would love your comments and we would love your feedback because we really are trying to, you know, ignite a conversation here. For example, off the top of the video, I mentioned that I could relate to Abby's struggle with high performing anxiety. I have totally struggled with panic attacks in the past, as have a lot of people I know. I think as women and as entrepreneurs, we're under a lot of stress and it's pretty common. The more we talk about it, the more we normalize it. But we would love to get your feedback, hear your comments, see what you think.